The earth is absolutely flat. My name is Dave. I'm known as Allegedly Dave. I'm um, 56 years old and uh, I... Should know bloody better. Welcome back. I am Mr. Sensible and today we're going to have a look at a very strange chap called Allegedly Dave. I'm sure that many of you have seen him before. This video is not a piss take. Know that the Earth is a flat motionless plane. That is, uh, the model is that uh, there's a disk of water with continents strung out around the North Pole in the center and uh, it's um, bordered on the circumference with what we call Antarctica. No, Dave, that's not a model. That's just some half assed idea pulled out of somebody's butt. You can sail all the way around Antarctica. You don't need to go around the entire circumference of a flat Earth, which would take you weeks and weeks and weeks, or months even. Go on, tell us some more. Yeah, it's, the, it's literally the circumference of, of the Earth. It's, uh, again, if you imagine the, um, the North Pole in the centre, all the uh, continents kind of strung out around the North Pole and round the edge is what we call Antarctica. Well, there, there's this thing called the Antarctica Treaty, which is um, a, a treaty by all the United Nations countries that have agreed that nobody is allowed to go there. I call bullshit, Dave. For a start, the Antarctic Treaty is not signed by all the countries. And it does not say that you can't go there. Let's have a quick look at it. It's actually not that detailed. It's quite straightforward. Let's see what you think. Good idea. A quick drink before we start, Dave. Nice one. Okay, Dave, while you finish your drink, I'll summarise the Antarctic Treaty for you. Article 1. Peaceful purposes only. Although you can have military where they're involved in scientific research. Article 2. Freedom of scientific investigation. Article 3. Uh, we agree that information regarding plans for programmes be exchanged, personnel be exchanged between expeditions, etc. Observations and results be exchanged, be made freely available, and every encouragement should be given to cooperative working relations. All sounds good so far. Article 4. Uh, it's all to do with existing rights, uh, that you're not losing any existing rights. All quite straightforward. You can make no new claims or enlargement of existing claims. Sounds fair enough. Article 5, no nuclear explosions. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Uh, the area that the treaty applies to, which is the area south of 60 degrees south. Article 7, to do with things like um, informing other parties when you're holding expeditions, what stations there are and who it's occupied by, any military personnel equipment and why you're bringing it there, basically letting each other know what's going on. Article 8 we're on now, I think. Uh, any persons there will be subject to jurisdiction of the contracting party, basically all to do with what laws apply to people. Article 9, to do with meetings um, which are held at suitable intervals to exchange information. All about the use of Antarctica for peaceful purposes, scientific research, scientific cooperation, uh, the exercise of jurisdiction, yada, yada, yada. Article 10. All parties will make appropriate efforts consistent with the Charter of the UN to the end that no one engages in any activity contrary to the, the treaty. Article 11 is all about disputes, 
um, how they should be resolved um, and it will be referred to the International Court of Justice where appropriate, fairly sensible. And as it says here, Articles 12, 13, 14 are all to do with upholding, interpreting and amending the treaty. I didn't see jack shit in there about you can't go or that planes aren't allowed to fly over there or that if you try to go there, the military will stop you. You are pulling that out of your arse. You can go there um, on a package tour and you'll go to the kind of outer islands, you know, see some penguins, go and see a barbershop pole that's supposed to be the South Pole, which they'll tell you isn't the actual South Pole. Dave, there is a difference between the geographic South Pole and the magnetic South Pole. That's all. Um, and that's it. If you want to go any further or you want to go unaccompanied, um, you'll get turned back by the, by the military. So have you visited Dave? Have you tried to go beyond where they will allow you to? You do realise it's a bloody dangerous place. In October, the temperatures range between a high of minus 47 and a low of minus 53, through to July, where it's a high of minus 56 and a low of minus 64. Whoa, change of shirt. Unlike flat earthers, I did a bit of double checking, a little bit more research, and here is a correction to what I've just said. Uh, this is from the British Antarctic Survey. Around the coast of Antarctica, temperatures are generally close to freezing in the summer, December to February months, or even slightly positive in the northern part of the Antarctic Peninsula. During winter, monthly mean temperatures at coastal stations are between minus 10 and minus 30, but temperatures may briefly rise towards freezing when the winter storms bring warm air towards the Antarctic coast. Conditions on the high interior plateau are much colder as a result of its higher elevation, higher latitude and greater distance from the ocean. Here, summer temperatures struggle to get above minus 20 and monthly mean, sorry, monthly means fall below minus 60 in the winter. Vostok Station holds the record for the lowest ever temperature recorded at the surface of the Earth of minus 89.2, the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Take you back to your program. You can get dead very quickly. You can't just go wandering around. It's not like visiting your little science museum there. I did a lot of uh, research on Einstein's theory of relativity. I was listening to Richard Feynman lectures. Um, I, was, I was into science. Well, it's a shame you didn't seem to take it on board and understand it, Dave. You know, I was just a normal bloke, just uh, doing what everyone else does. But then you start seeing things that um, are wrong. And rather than just ignoring them, you know, thinking, oh, I must, I must be stupid. And studying it some more, and perhaps talking to people who have knowledge of these subjects to find out where you've gone wrong. I thought I'd actually look into them and see what I can find out about them. And once you do that, that's the turning point. Once you actually look, stop and look, put aside your preconceptions, then you find, you find stuff. And as this ordinary bloke, you find that Einstein is totally wrong and Feynman is wrong. How likely do you really think that is, Dave, that you, as an ordinary bloke, have outthought Einstein? Indoctrination right there. All these little kids looking at that, being told by their teacher, they, they live here. It's, it's, this, is, this is indoctrination. No, Dave, it's education. Did you try it? Yeah, at an age where they can't critically um, interpret information. Dave, you're bloody 56 years old and you can't critically interpret information. This will, this will form the basis of their reality. This is how easy it is. It really is. But apparently not that easy for a flat earther, age 56. Blimey Dave, the way you're knocking them back, you're making me feel thirsty. 
Every time I fly, I always take the time to speak to the pilots. And half the pilots I've spoken to have seen the curvature. Half the pilots haven't seen the curvature. Um, according to mainstream science, nobody can see the curvature from a, from a passenger. Well, you're not going to see it from a passenger window. You need a 60 degree field of vision. And if you're flying at the full, full height of um, 37,000 feet, and you do have that full field of view, perhaps if you were sat up with a pilot, then you may see slight curvature. It's going to depend on your eyes and it's going to depend on, on what the atmosphere is like. At, under best conditions, if you've got really good eyes, you possibly, possibly could see it, but it won't be easy. I've looked at flight paths of things between South Africa and South America, and it's, or, or Australia, and it's more so going over Antarctica. No, which, no on a globe, over Antarctica. Well, they do. There are trans transantarctic flights. Oh. Not many, but it depends on the range of the no. aircraft. And really, we've looked into we've been trying to find There's none. Nothing is allowed to fly over the South Pole. Dave, you obviously weren't listening earlier. Go back and reread the Antarctic Treaty and please point out where it says you cannot fly over the Antarctic continent and listen to that trainee pilot. Okay, so that, that comes down to ETOPS ratings in terms of how far an aircraft can go from an airfield. Um, such as uh, the longest one is 330 minutes, that's the A350 or something. Um, which, which pretty much puts a hole over the Antarctica because it's so far away from every other airfield. Mm -hmm. They can't go over that because if they have a problem, it's too far away for somewhere to land. That seems quite obvious, Dave. And by the way, stop knocking back those drinks. It seems quite obvious that you're own, he's only talking about range of aircraft. You can't fly somewhere where you're going to run out of fuel. That's all. The moon landing is absolutely fake. The supposed lunar lander. Um, it's uh, one good thing is that it's really accurate because there's no blast crater underneath the uh, underneath the lander where there's a, a massive rocket engine. The force exerted by those um, motors as they approached landing was around a third of the force an average man exerts on the floor. Do you get craters appearing under you when you walk around? And there's no dust in the, um, in the, in the pads there, so, you know. Rewatch some of the footage of the Eagle just as it was about to touch down. What can you see? The dust streaming away. It doesn't billow around um, like it would do if it was on Earth because there's no atmosphere. It just streams straight and directly away. There is nothing to settle onto the pads. <laughs> Very accurate indeed. But to, to think that this, uh, this contraption made it to, uh, you know, 238,000 miles away and landed on the moon is just ridiculous. Dave, they didn't use the LEM, the Lunar Excursion Model, to fly all the way to the moon. They took off, losing various stages as they were used up, and once they were on their way, the command module disengaged, turned around, and extracted the LEM from the storage area. And then the command module and the LEM went together. The LEM was only used by Armstrong and Aldrin to go down to the moon, from orbit and back up again. That's it. This sort of stuff's not hard. Use Wikipedia, use Google. Bloody hell, watch the film Apollo 13. There's a great shot. Yes, of course, that is models or CGI, but there's great shots showing you how they did it. Somebody tell me how a, how a zip holds back the vacuum of space. I don't know. How can you, how you, can, can you have zips? in a space suit. Because inside there's another rubberized suit that forms a secure lining. This is just protective. Yeah. Then you got another rubber one on the inside that's perfectly safe. Dave, instead of studying Einstein's theory of relativity and listening to Feynman, perhaps you ought to find other ordinary blokes strolling around and just ask them. The suit was made up of many layers 
And yes, actually, you can get pressurised zips. How does, how does rubber actually protect against, uh, uh, against radiation? This outer suit does it. The inner oh, suit, really? The inner this suit fabric suit? suit. Yeah, yeah, but this is a suit behind a suit behind a suit. There's multiple layers. Each one has a different job. This one is for cooling. <sighs> okay, Dave, here we go. Here's the layers. Cotton, lightweight Nomex cloth, neoprene clue, coated nylon, nylon, Nomex cloth, Teflon coated beta cloth, porous lightweight nylon, vinyl tubing, nylon spandex, lightweight Nomex cloth, knit jersey laminate, neoprene, convolute, neoprene coated nylon, nylon, neoprene coated nylon, four layers of non-woven Dacron, five layers of aluminized mylar, two layers of beta marquisite, which is Teflon coated silica fibre laminated to Kapton, two layers of aluminized griddled Kapton, beta cloth, which is Teflon coated silica fibre, and tef Teflon cloth. <sighs> Got it? Do you know how much uh, shielding you need for, for the radiation outside the Earth's atmosphere? Oh, I don't know what it is, but... But it's way more, it's like lead. You need lead shielding. No, no. Well, that guy's honest. He said he didn't know what it is. You're not honest. You just made stuff up. The suits did provide a certain amount of radiation protection. The flight to the moon was designed to try and avoid the maximum amount of radiation, but they did receive some radiation. They did have health effects in later life. At the time, it was a risk they were willing to take. These were brave people, men whom you're not worthy to clean their boots. Pretty much everything you see around you is not what it appears to be. It's just a, a story you were given, and if you believe it, well, you can live your whole life believing that story. But there's other things going on. Um, but if you don't know about them, then you'll end up reacting to things that happen in this world. Think for yourselves, you know, r rather than accept all this stuff that you've, you've been taught. Think for yourselves. I'm surprised you can think at all, Dave, what with all your, your drinking. Dave. Questioning things is good, it's the right thing to do, but you, you need to use some critical thinking. You need to research a little more widely. You need to discuss with people. You, you, you can't just accept things without evidence. It's just, it's not good. You, you may end up just accepting the right thing, but the chances are you're going to accept the wrong thing. Established science is there for a good reason. It's because it's established on good, solid work, on facts, on experiments, on observation. You can't just say something like, oh, Antarctica goes, Antarctica goes all the way around a flat Earth, unless there is some actual evidence for that. And there's none, is there, Dave? Cheers, Dave. Don't mind if I do. Hmm. What is this? Well, I've been drinking urine now for, for six years. What? My morning routine is basically, um, I would you know, get up, um, wear my glass, um, drink most of it, uh, leaving a little bit at the bottom. And uh, yeah, I'd wash myself with it. And that's uh, essentially just pouring a little bit in the palm of my hand and massaging it into my skin a section at a time. Go away, Dave. Go, clear off. Oh, blimey. What on earth was the point in me producing a serious video response to your video, Dave? if you're just going to take the piss out of yourself. <laughs> we apologise for the interruption to this programme. News has come in that twice Mr Nathan Oakley has offered Mr Sensible to come onto his programme and debate him. And twice, Mr. Sensible has said, yes, he would like to debate, 
but has challenged Mr Oakley to the debate on a neutral or his channel. To this point, Mr Nathan Oakley still hasn't replied. It would appear that Mr Nathan Oakley is yellow. Before we return you to, a, to your programme, a further bulletin has just come in from the Metropolitan Police. There are reports of a strange gentleman hanging around near lavatories holding a glass. If you see this gentleman, stay well clear of him and call the police on 999. We return you to your programme. Thank you. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Although I don't much fancy enjoying that drink. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Just click the little ball down in the corner. Also hit that notification bell to get um, alerts as I make and release new videos. The Retarded Conspiratard Cheese Awards are still running and open for nominations. See the link up here. Mr Sensible Live will be starting in a few days, so please join us. You can take part um, via Discord chat. Link will be below. And if you want to take part on voice, please send me a message and request that I make your uh, that I give your Discord user permissions to join in. Hope to see you there. Until next time. Don't drink the Kool-Aid and stay sensible. <laughs> Shut up and sit down.